Howdy howdy guys, Ponchato here and today we're going to be taking a look at the James Donkey 102 wireless gaming mouse. So James Donkey is, wait, James Donkey? That's actually what this company is called, really. So James Donkey is a newcomer to the computer peripherals market, at least in the US. They offer keyboards, mice, and mouse pads at a range of budgets, but the one I was interested in was their entry-level 102 wireless gaming mouse. First, because I've always used wired mice and I was curious to try out wireless, and second, the price, which I'll get into soon. The 102 comes in a surprisingly attractive box. Honestly, I was expecting something like this. Pull the tab to expose the sleeve and you're greeted with their goofy logo and a view of the mouse. Inside the yellow jacket are the specifications, dimensions, weight, DPI levels, button description, a few things about power use, refresh rate, and acceleration rating. Note that that's acceleration in terms of how fast you can move the mouse before it starts to have trouble tracking, not the typical move your mouse faster and sensitivity increases acceleration. Behind the mouse is their product specification and button schematic. In case you're wondering, yes, this company is definitely Chinese. If it wasn't clear from the Chinese characters, I think the phrases three-stage speed with free driver and comfortable hand feeling give it away. They also include two Duke Cell, not quite Duracell, AAA batteries in the box. Oh, and warranty information in Chinese. Well then. The James Donkey 102 has seven buttons, left, right, and scroll, forward and back browser buttons, a center DPI switch, and the on-off switch. Really, it's a six-button mouse with a power switch. The mouse is just under five inches long and three inches wide, or 12 and a half by seven and a half centimeters, and weighs in at a slightly above average 106 grams. Granted, I'm considering the average weight of wired mice since most people use wired. Otherwise, it's pretty standard for a wireless mouse. The sensitivity is adjustable between 1000, 1600, and 2000 DPI. When you switch between sensitivities with the the DPI button, two internal yellow LEDs flash based on what level you landed on, once for 1000, twice for 1600, and three times for 2000. It'd be pretty nifty to be able to toggle the LEDs always on, but understandably that would kill battery life. Speaking of which, their description does say the mouse can last up to 12 months in standby, and I've been using it 8-12 to 12 hours a day for almost 3 weeks now. So far, it doesn't look like battery life is an issue, which is something I was worried about when switching to a wireless mouse. On that topic, wireless, I have to say, I feel like I've been missing out. I used to regularly struggle with wires getting Getting tangled underneath my desk and a really annoying problem of my SteelSeries Rival 100's cord wrapping over itself and then hitting the desk, making noise, every time I moved my mouse. With the 102 though, I don't have any of those problems. The USB receiver comes stored behind the battery cover and is simply plug and play with Windows 10. In fact, it uses a standard mouse driver so it should be plug and play with any operating system. In terms of range, I've tested it successfully up to about 16 feet. If you're playing games from your couch even in a large room, range shouldn't be an issue. Now here's something you don't often see. The refresh rate specified on the box is 125 hertz, but the mouse actually runs at 250. So the mouse actually performs better than what James Donkey says it's capable of. And realistically, it'd be very difficult to tell which is which between 250 50 hertz and 500 or 1000. That's a difference of 1 or 3 milliseconds. Tough for humans to notice and the quality of the sensor is more important anyway. Speaking of which, again, these companies, they don't give any specifications or model names for the sensors in their mice. I mean, the 102 has a little more information than other mice I've looked at, but they don't say what sensor the mouse uses. I have found a few things though. It's an optical sensor and based on my testing, tragically, it does have a little bit of angle snapping. I haven't noticed it too much in games though and I should mention again that this is the first wireless mouse I've used. I have no idea if it's an issue with the sensor itself or just due to the mouse being wireless. Fortunately and more importantly, it doesn't appear to have any built-in acceleration. Now as far as appearances go, I actually really like the design of the mouse. White and yellow is surprisingly attractive. Normally quote unquote gamer equipment isn't that appealing to me, but the shape of the mouse looks great, and at this price point, that really wasn't something I expected. In addition to white and yellow, there's a black and yellow color scheme along with wired variants. If you want something a bit more eye-catching, there's a red and black version for a few dollars more, the 112C. I use a claw grip and I've been very satisfied with how comfortable this mouse is. The left and right buttons are slightly curved inward so your fingers naturally rest in the middle of the buttons. They have a fairly pronounced click and enough travel for clear tactile feedback while gaming. The scroll wheel and DPI switch are both located in a comfortable position which I can easily reach without moving my whole hand. Likewise, the forward and back buttons are at exactly the right place for my thumb. The scroll wheel has a soft rubber surface and a satisfying and noticeable click. Scrolling is a bit less rigid than I'd prefer, but stiff enough that you won't be accidentally switching weapons in the middle of a firefight. The pads on the left and right sides are very grippy rubber and in three weeks of use they haven't gotten dirty or grimy. The mouse slides easily on a cloth mouse pad and has three super smooth feet, one each under the left and right buttons and a large pad at the rear of the mouse. Take a listen to the sound of the left and right buttons.
Now the scroll wheel and DPI switch. And finally, the forward and back buttons. All in all, I have to say this mouse has a shockingly high value for the price. It's comfortable, good DPI range, very attractive, and priced better than almost every other mouse on the market. If you're interested in testing out the Wireless Mouse Arena, or if you just want something different than the super budget mouse you're running now, the James Donkey 102 is a fantastic option. And at this price, it's accessible to almost everyone. Now, the price. What would you expect to pay for a mouse like this? Six buttons, adjustable DPI, no built-in acceleration wireless, and an attractive design. $20? $30? $50? Try $6.99. Thank you, China. That's actually even less than I paid for the Logitech B100, which is literally the most basic mouse you can buy. As a matter of fact, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a mouse cheaper than this, and you will definitely not get adjustable DPI, or wireless, or forward and back buttons, or a pretty design. If James Donkey has piqued your interest, which it should, you can pick up the 102 from Amazon, linked in the description below. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you have any questions about the mouse or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. In fact, I'm curious, what mouse do you guys use? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video.